We're on. All right, Stan. For now on, there's no like, hey, we live. Like, I want like a, a nice intro. I've had two people hit me up like, hey man, you guys rolling around fucking beer bottles and quarters and talking about nonsense. Actually, makes me want to turn off the show. Who said this to you? I've had two people hit me up. I've had one or two people say that as well. Yeah. And, I, and then I've had ten people, at least ten people, say, I like the way that it opens up like that, where it's not like a jingle and all that, and it just goes right into you guys talking. Well, hang on. It doesn't have to... I've had mixed reviews, I, yeah. No. No, we've actually... You have not had ten people. That's just how you like it to go. No. It's like, hey, we, I, hey... Do you sit and read any of the comments or anything about our show? No. I do. You don't give me access to these things. It's public. It's public information. No, it's not. Mm. Well, I think overall they're like, yeah, sick show. But I've had a few people like, love the show. Your beginnings are are a piece of shit. So we'll start working on a jingle. Yeah, well, not a jingle. Just hey, welcome to the mess and the man show. I know one thing I do notice is our our voice volumes are always different because you sit closer to the mic and like yell into the mic, and I sit far away. I mean, these are good mics; they can handle yeah. it. Yeah. Well, what, what should we do, Joe? Should I be closer to the mic or further? Yeah, man, talking to the mic. Talking to the mic. Eat it. Talk, mic. Yeah, eat yeah, yeah. to the mic. Eat the fucking mic. I know your manager Parsons even said that too. That yeah. sometimes it seems like that. Yeah. But I know sometimes I move around and doing other things in the studio. Yeah. And I change my voice volume sometimes too. I'm usually always pretty on. I'm always like super hype. Yeah. You're like, hey, I fucking. Hey. Yeah, yeah. You want to know what else I got bad reviews on? What'd you get? The week that I wasn't in. Mm -hmm. You just talking about yourself, like... Well, that's what we had to do in between. Yeah. <laughs> it was, hang on, I did give that a listen, because I was like, let me see what Stan did without me. I was like, whoa, me not being in the studio to check Stan? <laughs> He's going in right now. To check me? In which way? Like, all right, Stan, easy, cowboy. What? Easy, what? down boy. Mm, you we were just bragging to Joe about how badass you are. For Joe, like No, Joe was asking me questions. I know, but... Was I bragging how badass I was, or was I telling a true story? Uh, you could have took the podcast a different direction. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Hang on. Again, I have had a couple people reach out to me like, whoa, Stan really got going about himself Who? when you were away. Who? You don't know them. Interesting. But they've gotten to know you over, you know, because they listen to every episode and, and stuff like that, you know. Well, that was pretty much, it almost felt like the last episode, and I told Joe, like, I didn't even want to talk about myself, but it almost felt like Joe interviewed me and asked me a few did questions. Did you, did you listen back to the episode? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Drunk, drunk and rambling idiot, me and Joe. Oh, uh, hang on. You know what's amazing is, because I didn't realize that you were drunk. Buzzed. You know, not drunk. Well, no. Yeah. Whatever. Until later in the episode because when I opened up the episode you guys told me like yeah he's drinking water not one but two and then it turns out you were drinking beer and I was like this motherfucker mm -hmm. to be fair he was also drinking water yeah alright power drinking water and power drinking beer so this uh, Juan won his fight but overall I've actually gotten very nothing negative nothing really negative I've gotten like stupid people say like you know just dumb shit. Like, oh, how, who are these two to talk about Michael Bisping? Or who are these two to talk about, you know? Right. Yeah. Or like when we interviewed Ben Askren. <laughs> Hang on. Who are these two? I can talk about Ben. Because I, I fucking was on a oh. show with him. I'm a professional fighter. Who are you <laughs> to even ask who are these two? No, even both of us could say anything about well, anyone. Well, a little more me than you, Stan. Bro, bo <laughs> both of us could say anything about anyone. <laughs> right. It's not like we're insulting people. We were just giving an opinion, you know? That's what we do. Well, on the sometimes show. the opinion can be insulting. Yeah. But hey, the 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 truth or opinions can hurt, man. I think that's where society is so, so, so soft. Everybody's feelings hurt. Everybody's feelings get hurt over words. Like, whatever happened to sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Whatever happened to that? I grew up on that. What, sticks and stones? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words are, like, destroying people now. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, people are like, what? You called me a, you know, a jerk-off. Like, eh, like. Well, yeah, even that episode. Still, now he's, like, ghosting me in the 
in my chat with him is uh, Shannon Briggs trying to get the champ on the show. Mm. That's where any of the lulls in the last show came from. Was pushing, you know, exchanging texts with him and him being like, "I'll call in a little bit," and me being like, "All right, all right, Joe, we'll, you know what?" You mean doing? two episodes ago? Two episodes. Yeah, ago. Yeah, got you. Um, but hang on, I think I'm on like a really good topic right now. You're fucking. What's a really good topic? Like about society just being fucking weak. Oh, 100 percent, bitch, man. Well, Joe. Dennis, you have kids. How yeah, gonna, I got two little boys. How are you going to raise them in a world like that? Like, don't be a fucking bitch. I am like, I will give them a dusting. Really? Now, a dusting is like, imagine there's dust on the top of his head, and I'm quickly getting it off his out of his hair. We live in like the snowflake society. I'm not smacking him when his face turns red. That's a paintbrush. Huh? That's a full paintbrush. You're not giving him the paintbrush. You're giving him the dusting. Yeah, I give him a dusting. Yeah. Because I think there should, I mean... Well, that's a whole topic, too, is that they say, like, kids, you know, A, B, as you always say, you know, yeah. you want to get in line, and you're in line, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And you, and you were like, all right, I don't want to get put in line again, so I'm going to do what he's telling me. Let you know me stay I mean? right here. Like, my three nephews, phew, do whatever they want, you know? Uh, they say, like, to my brother-in-law, like, phew, my dad ain't going to do shit. Uh, because, you know, at, 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 you know, in this, this pre-teen era that I went through, you know, 12, 13, you know, my dad would lay the smack down on me if I got out of line. My mom never really hit me that, you know, I mean, when I was younger or whatever, but then, you know, I started getting older where I'm like kind of a man, like, you can't, like, go ahead, mom, I'll freaking grab your hand, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll block that shit, you know? And my mom is way more uh, laid back than my father, you know? And she let me do a lot more stuff. And then when she didn't let me, when she put her foot down, I'm like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? Like, no, I want to do what I want to do. And I might yell back at her and like, you know, say like the, the most awful thing I could say, like, I hate you. Like, I'm trying to melt her, you know? Because my, I see my little, my, one of my little guys like told me he got a dusting, sent to his room, and he told me he hated me. And I was like, I thought that would hurt my feelings more than than it is, you know? Because I know he really doesn't hate me, you know. You're just you're trying to you're trying to fucking play mental warfare with me, okay? And I'm a goddamn champion, and it's not gonna work, son. Well, that was one thing I remember thinking years ago. Is like you're gonna have a kid, and one day, no matter what you do, you're gonna raise that kid. You're gonna spend all your money. You you're gonna take punches, beat up. That's your life. That's how you put money, food on this kid's table. Blood separately. money. Blood money. Yeah. And then one day he's going to go, you know what, Dad? I fucking hate you. He's going to curse. He's going to go, I fucking hate you. And then you're going to go, you just curse and you hate me. He's going to go, fuck you, Dad. And then, like, walk away. And you're going to be like, what? What did you just say to me? What do you know, Stan? I'm telling you, my son already told me he hates me, but I don't think he knows. Well, you know those teenage years. You never had that? Oh, but, well, the thing is, again, yeah. he's getting a Dustin now because he's a small boy. Mm-hmm. Now, once he becomes becoming a little bit more like a man, we're going to have to make some, a few adjustments. Yeah. On how hard these dustings are. No. To yeah. make sure he's, because I mean, you can't give him a, because I remember actually my mom <laughs> smacked me one time. I was just like, I think I like smiled or like something like that where it was like, oof. But like she was like, oh, damn, like that didn't hurt him. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I had to keep me in line was I had, my dad was always, my dad has like huge hand mitts. So ah. he, he gave me like one or two dustings when yeah. I was a little kid. And I was like, all right, I don't, kind of don't want that again. But then... My mom, like my dad would be at work. My mom would threaten me with her brother, who's also actually named Phil Baroni. He's crazy. He's like, I was like, you know. Wow, I'll get Uncle Phil. 300, Uncle Phil, yeah, exactly. He has like 300 street fights, 500 street fights, you know, in and out of jail his whole life, can fuck some people up. Yeah. Boxing. He yeah. grew, he, like he's beaten Howard Davis in the amateurs. He beat like some really good people in yeah. the amateurs. Like when I met Howard Davis, Howard Davis was like, oh, my God, Phil Baroni. And, you know, I was like, no, not the UFC one. He's like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. He used to whoop the shit out of me and bully me. And I was like, what? Well, the thing is, so my mom, I think I I have my mother's hands. I've got these, like, small hands. Ladies, don't get the wrong idea. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay, it's not true. Anyways, um, where my father, like, he worked on cars. He still works on cars, like, metal, like, all day. He had these, like, very... Callous, like, meaty hands. So, like, I never got a dusting. Yeah. I got, it felt like I got smacked in the face with a shovel. Mm-hmm. Where, like, just after one, from my nose to my ear of whatever side he hit me, 
on went numb. Yeah. And like, uh, like, damn, you know, but I didn't want that. So I stayed in line, you know, my thing, my uncle Phillips thing was like, if you put your hands up, he boxed. So he was like body, boom, boom, boom. So he would fuck, you know, I'm like, yo, I remember one time, cause it would be like, you were getting yelled at and your hands were by your side and he would like sneak one or two in there, whatever. And I remember one day I was on the couch and he was like teeing off a little bit. So I was blocked him and I was blocking all of them. And I felt like a ninja. I remember being like, damn. <laughs> and then he was like, move your hands. And I was like, what? Like, this isn't fair. Move my hands, dude. Like, and then like, you had like, it's almost like, have you ever tried like zapping yourself with like a, like, um. Electrocuting myself? No. You know, you know, what, you know, you know the zappers for the, the like a fly? Those fly zappers are electric, you know? Have you ever tried to do that to yourself? No. You, like, can't. Like, you know you're about to inflict pain on yourself. Like, you can't. It's very hard to do it to yourself. That's how this felt. Like, move your hands. Like, what? This is stopping me from getting crushed. Against all the instincts. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I never electrocuted myself or touched a bug zapper. Or thought yeah, about you're a fucking pussy, dude. You were just saying how you were a pussy, and you were like, oh, I can't. I know I don't want to touch it. Did you touch the bug zapper is the question. Yes. Bo- Boca Raton. Hello. Hello. Is this hey. Jake Hager? Yes, I am so sorry. Oh, no worries at all. Welcome to Menace and the Man. Stan the Man here. I'm here with Dennis the Menace Bermudez. Jake, congrats on the win, hey. dude. Hey, man, thank you, thank you. What a pleasant surprise. I was I was thinking after the win that I was gonna get like a little bit of like more of like a character. You what know? out of him? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, nah, he wasn't really he was more like um how would you describe yourself when you were a pro wrestler? Like you weren't really like a gimmick, I wouldn't say, you know? Like I feel like that was you out there. Yeah, it was, but you know, a lot of it a little bit over the top, especially in the early uh swag years. You know, it's funny, I told myself I was like, Hey, be cool afterwards, uh, you know, if, if you win, act like you've been to town before. Mm. And then when it happened, I, I totally lost it. I just let the emotion take over. It was... <laughs> no, I thought <laughs> you were good. Of, out of my hands. I thought you were good. You know, I thought you I was were... Definitely, yeah. I was definitely... Yeah. I was definitely having fun with the, the interview. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you didn't go full-blown Brock Lesnar, but you definitely uh, put yourself on the, on the map right there. What does that mean? I can't talk on the microphone? Oh, Come no, on, no, no. I'm saying, you remember how when Brock won that fight, he went crazy a little bit, and he just started screaming oh. in the UFC? Oh, okay. Yeah, you didn't go that way. <laughs> All right, you're lucky. You're lucky. Thank you. I'll fuck him up for you, Jake. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to have some fun. Yeah. Hang on. While yeah, we're Bobby, ta- he, while... He's fucking huge. I'm not trying to piss yeah. this dude off. Yeah, while we're talking about Brock, my favorite thing was, like, I'm going to go home, get on top of my woman, or no, I'm going to go home, drink a, what was it, Coors Light, because Bud Light don't want to give me no money. Shit, I might even talk, get on top of my lady tonight. <laughs> <laughs> was that not monumental? That was amazing, no? I mean, what a, what a great message that, that just sent, <laughs> you know? I agree. <laughs> so where, where are you originally from? Originally, fr- like, I was born in Fargo. North Dakota. Okay. And then uh, when I was four, my dad moved us to Perry, Oklahoma. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, started wrestling there like five years old with like Damn. the YMCA programs. Yeah. Yeah, you, very, threw, you very, threw me off with the five six one number. I wasn't sure where this was coming from. I was like, this is this Jay? Is can this be Jack Swagger calling me from Florida? Well, yeah, yeah, you know. And then and then you marry a, a Florida girl, and mm. that's where you're stuck at. <laughs> well, the taxes. Well, actually, are the taxes cheaper then than they would have been in Oklahoma? Um, you know, we don't have a state income tax here, so that definitely helps, uh, especially when you're an independent contractor. Mm. Um, so it may have been a little bit less, but uh, but kind of similar. And now you wrestled a little bit there too, I'm sure, right? Because I know Tampa is like a hotbed for wrestling. Well, you know, I feel like the jiu-jitsu scene here in the Tampa, St. Pete area is very strong. Lots of lots of great places to go and, and get good training partners. Um, uh, wrestling, you know, it's hard for me to find heavyweights. Uh, 
uh, my size that, you know, on my level of wrestling. I got a couple of them, but I definitely need more. Well, even I was talking about the pro wrestling, like back in the day. It, it, I'm oh, sure yeah. when you lived in Tampa, I know a lot of the pro wrestlers live in Tampa, and don't they have, like, training facilities and whatnot down there? Yeah, that's originally why I went down here in 2007 uh, for Florida Championship Wrestling, which was part of their de uh, developmental program. And there's still, like, a bunch of us just kind of stationed here uh, because of that. Yeah, so now where, you had this win this weekend in Bellator now. What's the next thing? Are you uh, looking to get right back in there? Are you going to take a little time off? Uh, I definitely get back in there. I'm, I'm looking the, as, at this as, at the beginning of season. Um, that, was, that, was, that was the first duel, so... You know, keep uh, keep progressing, um, keep working harder, uh, and you know I'm gonna have better opponents down the line, which is gonna make the fights harder. But I'm gonna be better, and uh, really excited about where I can be in six months. Um, I think I'm gonna press pause on the, on the pro wrestling and really just stay in the room and uh, focus on like uh, jump into another level. So I, I keep my face pretty and I uh, keep my hand in the air. Heard that the money maker. <laughs> gotta keep yeah. this everything all well, right <laughs> man i got these big gary Busey teeth so the mm. face better be looking good yeah so i mean i was talking with you a little bit about wrestling fucking my co-host here fucking got me sidetracked Did I? no well no we were talking about he was in oklahoma he started wrestling when he was five give me more about the because the, you know i was i started wrestling when i was in seventh grade and i did it for you know, over a decade. So I'm very, you know, that's like what I like to talk about a little bit more than fighting. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah, like uh, it was just one of those small towns that uh, uh, had a good tradition and the people around it, whether, you know, you had a son or a grandson um, coming up through the junior high, high school program, um, you supported it. Um, you would have like the entire town at the wrestling duels, uh, so like three to four thousand people there for wow. a mega wrestling duel, and it was, it was pretty crazy to grow up with that and uh, see that and like, okay, this is what you know tradition brings, and it's a lot of pressure. They used to have uh, the names of all the state champions written on the wall in the practice room. And yeah. I don't, all I remember is like, gosh, I want my name up there. That's like from from the time I was six, seven years old, I would see those names, and they're just written with a cheap, um, you know, paint brush. But like, it's on that wall, yeah. and it meant so much. It was just plywood, but it meant so much. And uh, we, it was just something that slowly became uh, who we were. And we had about seven seniors in my class, and we won state every year. I was in high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, Damn. and we we wanted to get seven state champions um, because that was the most that Perry had ever won in one year out of the fourteen weights, and uh, we we put five in the finals uh, our senior year with three winnings. So that was, we didn't come close, but that was our best. Right, that's all. You, that's all yeah. you can do in life, you know. Now, so like in Oklahoma, like wrestling was like Friday night lights for football but for wrestling no was your football team big too or no no the football team we called the dirty dozen um <laughs> everybody played everybody played both ways they only okay. had about 26 people out uh for the team um and then it would go right into wrestling so it was, it was really wrestling uh accentuated everything that perry did the football team wasn't bad uh just like just didn't have the tradition, and it just kind of like fell in the shadow, right. honestly. So the wrestlers had first dibs on the gals. <laughs> uh, this is Oklahoma, so I don't know how many gals. You're Wait, my sisters are. <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. You tried to walk me right into that. <laughs> I love it. I well, love you it. know. You know, wrestlers will eat anything, so that usually helps <laughs> with the ladies. Oh yeah, that's oh, that's what I meant to dude, say. Dude, do you remember the shirt that had like the ten reasons why to date a wrestler? Oh yeah, like no good, fear. like good on bottom, like knows how to ride, will eat anything, <laughs> like. <laughs> like we, we were so cool wearing those. Oh we? my gosh! I used to wear that shirt once a week. Like, hey, ladies, I don't know if you read this last week, but <laughs> yeah. look closely. These are the ten reasons why they did a wrestler. 
yeah. my dad like refuses to throw anything away so every now and then he'll pull out that the side eye door on a basketball floor all uh, oh, right wrestling mats from door to door he'll wear that thing on a on a good saturday he's like dad you feeling good today he's like yeah <laughs> then, then, <laughs> then there's then there's the the real men wrestler boys play with the balls like <laughs> oh, no, oh gosh no, no boys play with balls like wrestlers have them or something along those lines <laughs> yeah, I just love all that shit, man. If, if a shirt said wrestling, I would buy it. <laughs> like, yeah. just because it's like, is that wrestling, you know? You were obsessed. Oh, loved it. When people give me MMA stuff, I'm like, oh, how can I get, you want an MMA shirt? You know, I'm sure you get, right? Like, you probably get, hey, dude, here's my shirt. Give me, you know, wear my shirt. Like, dude, what the fuck, man? I'll use this for painting. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, you know, it comes with anything, I guess. Uh, but, you know, who would have thought that how popular the sport of amateur wrestling would become, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, the resurgence from almost getting kicked out of the Olympics, like, really motivated all the fans to make wrestling uh, such a popular sport. And now it's every round of the national tournaments on ESPN covered, which is awesome yeah so so you wrestled in high school you went on to wrestle in college no yep yep so i uh i wrestled in high school two-time state champ woo, woo. uh three three times state finalists if i'm at my own horn uh had offers to go to wrestle for john smith at oklahoma state okay um when they were in the midst of winning their back-to-back -back, back whatever titles it was um couldn't stand John Smith. Uh, he had screwed over Joe C., who was a good friend of mine. So uh, wanted to go play football at Oklahoma. Got a full ride there to play football, defensive tackle. Got up to about like 293, but the speed just wasn't coming yeah. along with me. Yeah, you're, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're white, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we can be honest. It's 2019, let's be honest, you know. <laughs> uh, so... Um, can we, we pause for one second? Can we pause? Yeah, like, go how, ahead. Gr how great is football? I loved playing football. Like I, I loved playing it. But when you won, it wasn't the same as winning a wrestling match or a football or I mean a, a, a an MMA fight. You know. Mm -hmm. But it was so much fun while you were doing it. Man, you know? I, I, I really believe high school football is like one of the best oh. things ever. Just that age, oh. that time. It, it really teaches you a lot about life but while being like so much fun and letting you just go cut loose for 45 minutes an yeah. hour. Do you, yeah. you want to know my move was? Yeah. It was to hit the biggest guy not looking at me and just totally <laughs> decleat him. It was so great for the morale of the team on the side. Like, oh, my God, Dennis just killed him. He's the smallest guy on <laughs> our team, and he just killed their biggest guy. <laughs> that was my move. You got to be the wild card. Yeah, I get it. Dude, I, there was no breaks before contact with me. I would come in head first and, like, I would leave my feet before tackling somebody. But, like, you know when the guy's, like, pretty much already tackled, but it's, like, a slow, he's about, like, a slow timber? I would leave my feet, <laughs> like, just fling your and, body and just, like, I'd be, like, late hit, you know? <laughs> he had it coming. Yeah, fuck no him. No question. I'm a little guy. <laughs> And now, weren't you an All-American in college as well? Yep. Uh, switched over to wrestling uh, two years in. Um, now, what made that decision go go down? Well, you know, it was kind of crazy. We had just got done. That was 2002. We had just got done with the Rose Bowl. You know, so coming off a cool, you know, football season. Um, and they didn't have a heavyweight. He, they, he was academically ineligible for the remainder of the season. So they didn't have any practice uh, training partners like to fill in. So they called me and they're like, hey, we're, we're going to national duels next week. Can, can you fill in? <laughs> me in football shape, no kind of wrestling shape. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'd love Fuck to. It. Yeah. You know, I ended up not doing too bad. I uh, definitely we got second at national duels that year, surprisingly to Oklahoma State. You know, I was blown up, but I, you know, I didn't get stuck or you know embarrassed. Definitely better than them forfeiting the six points at yeah. the duel. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I, I developed a great relationship with my teammates. Some of them went out to be uh, turned out to be best men in my wedding, and I uh, decided that 
wrestling was for me, didn't see the NFL as a future, thought I could focus on my grades and and uh, really excel at wrestling. There's, so that, that was the switch. I'm, I'm sure you can contest to this, but there's definitely a closer bond with, like, your wrestling buddies than there was with your football buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's similar, but, you know, different at the same time. Like, yes. uh, football, it was like you had two or three, like, you know, with a strong connection, you know, you tell anything to. Well, the guy on the left and right of you, pretty much, right? Yeah, and then with wrestling, it was like almost the whole team. Yeah, right. that is true. Yeah. Right, you and watch that, your boy go out into battle. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and the and the assistant coaches, like they, a lot of them had just graduated or were seniors when I was a freshman on the team or sophomore on the team. So you knew them. You know, you looked at them as friends. Yeah, and now they're your coaches. So it's just you get even more. Uh, I don't know benefits from it that way. Right. Right. Um, so you went on, you finished the two years of wrestling and then, and then what do you get into, right? After, after college, you're just, yeah, I, I almost all American, uh, my junior year, then all American, my senior year, nice. and, uh, the last six months, you know, I'm doing the whole job search thing. Like, you know, college is told they're supposed to do, uh, this is 2006. So the bubble's about to burst and I'm about to graduate with a degree in finance and I'm looking everywhere for a job and there was like just no opportunity. It was just like, go be a telemarketer. I was like, I went to college to be a telemarketer. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, the opportunity to go work for the WWE was the best business choice for a young professional who like could handle himself and wanted to go see the world. It was awesome. I, I knew how to train and get better. So that wasn't the deal for me. And, uh, so, I in two, like I graduated in May of '06, and then July of '06, I was signed with WWE and moved to Atlanta to the first developmental program. Now, were you a pro wrestling fan growing up? Um, you know, I knew the household names, you know, you know, in the '80s, and then like in seventh, eighth grade, I got into like the Monday Night Wars, uh, WCW versus WWE. The NWO was like yeah, cool as shit, like yeah. everybody kind of noticed that during those years and then uh no i got away from it i, I wasn't a, a pro wrestling fan um until i started training again and kind of appreciated it more for like hey we're working these people you know and it was uh cool a lot cooler to me that way so one thing you might not know is the first mma gym i ever stepped into was steve blackman's no shit I swear to god <laughs> Good old Steve. So I know he would tell me a lot. We got to have him on the show soon. But like he would tell me a lot of shit, like a lot, what on the roads like. Oh, it's crazy. Like you guys are performing every night, no? Yep, yep. Usually Friday through Tuesday night. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. But Come only on. two of them get televised, right? Right, right. And the funny thing is. Uh, we make our money. We make more money on the non-televised ones that we do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is crazy. And then, like, you're responsible for, like, you're you're like the UFC. You're a, a independent contract. Independent contractor where you have to book your flights, right? You have to like book your, you have to get your cars, hotels, right? The only thing they would pay for would be the flights. But they were coach. Would, I was yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, like yeah. Like, Steve would tell me, like, fucking, like, Kevin Nash sitting coach, you know what I mean? Like, dude, he doesn't fit, you know? And, like, people would come in that were, like, in the middle seat and, like, look at him like, are you kidding me? And he'd be like, you, you're you going to have to get a new seat because, like, or you're going to squish in here. Like, I'm not moving, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. The best are, like, the Andre stories where you hear, oh, like, him he would up two go, seats, right? He would take up two seats, but, like, if you had your bag where he wanted to put his bag, he would just remove your bag from the overhead bin, set it right in the <laughs> middle of the aisle, put his bag there, and sit down, and then act like you're not there when you try to talk to him. Well, what are you going <laughs> to The thing is, what are you going to do? Oh, uh, can you, you imagine? Uh, can you imagine if someone fired up on Andre? Uh, so, one of my favorite stories that Steve ever told me, and, like, I don't think you know about it. Um, so he's flying and I thought, I think it was Farouk and somebody was like throwing stuff at him in the back of his head and he turned around and was like, yo, like stop. And they kept doing it. He's like, yo, I'm going to fuck you up. 
like they kept doing. He's like, all right. He's like, I didn't get up and hit him right there because I didn't want like the fire marshals to you know arrest me when I got the flight. So he's they're at baggage claim, and you know I forget which one was throwing stuff at him, but like he like confronts him. Hey man, like why I told you not to do that. He's like, dude, whatever. So like there became like a pushing match, which then turned into a a, a fist fight. Where, and Steve kind of knows how to fight because, like, of his Kempo and stuff like that. So, like, I forget who it was again. Like, threw a, a three-piece at him. Steve, like, slip, slip, slip. And then, like, did, like, a rock back. Crushed him with a two. And then Steve's foot got, like, stuck in a suitcase. And he tried, wow. like, hitting him again. And he, like, whatever. And then, you know, all the crew came and broke it up. And then on Monday, <laughs> Vince McMahon has Steve come in his office. He's like, Really? A fist fight at the airport? Like, what are you doing, Steve? And then Steve got put on, like, a seven-week, like, losing streak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems about right. Was it a guy named Bradshaw? Yes, Bradshaw. Yeah. Yes. I've heard many stories in pro wrestling about that guy getting into scu- uh, scuffles backstage and whatnot and being like a bully. Yeah, so have, have you, like, what's, who was the best to work with who were, were like, little dirt bags, on, you know, in the WWE? Yeah, it's, it's definitely easier to say the people I like working with. I could probably count on, like, two hands the people, you know, I didn't really like working with. Um, there were certain people that, like, it was no effort. You had instant chemistry. And by that, I mean, like, you moved together. You guys thought together. You knew where the match was going. And uh, we're just on the same page. And there's certain people that just can get in there with you the first time and have that. Um, guys like Matt Hardy, uh, Fitz Finley, Christian, Ray Mysterio, um, you know, like me and Rusev had like, a, a great USA Russia battle. And, uh, it was really one of my favorites because like, we really understood how to, how to help each other, uh, look good in it. All right. Right. And my, one of my favorite things is people be like, oh, it's fake wrestling. I'm like, bro, why don't you go up on top of that 15 15- foot thing and then fall go ahead i don't care if you know how to fall or not it's going it's going to suck now these guys now you're only 150 pounds he's 250 so add 100 pounds to your little ass and then jump off a 10 foot pole like it like you're an idiot yeah yeah you know they, they can say whatever they want about it it's so hard as shit to do and very hard on your body to make the, the littlest spot in this look good it takes a lot of work so I think uh, I think a lot of pro wrestlers have moved past that, like getting offended by by that because right. like, the, the stigma is gone. It's like so cool to be a, a pro wrestler or a pro wrestling fan. Right. You, it's not like you have to hide in the closet anymore. Right. Uh, like you know, someone's like, "Oh, you oh you do that fake wrestling? Like, yeah, I'll steal your girlfriend. How you feel <laughs> about that? Yeah. Oh, that say something wrestling? before I smack your fucking face off you, you little bitch. Oh, people being insane to speak to wrestle like that. <laughs> You can you always hit them with the little fake wrestling, but it's real money. Oh, I like that. And the thing is, what also like no one's ever saying that to your face. It's all behind the keyboard. Like, well, like the only wrestler I've ever heard of like getting beat up when I was a kid or growing up was like Shawn Michaels. Like I've read, all the other wrestlers I've always heard like, oh no, they fucked that dude up. Like yeah, they beat those guys up. Like yeah, yeah. I remember Andre the oh no, not Andre the Giant. The Big Show was on Long Island when I was a kid, and I went to like a thing at the NASA Coliseum, and like two days later, he was like in, on the cover of Newsday because he open hand slapped some guy and broke the guy's jaw. Wow! At like wow. the Marriott right here on Long Island. Wow. Yeah. So like, who who's stupid enough like to walk up to Jack Swagger and be like, "Pro wrestling's fake," like talk some dumb shit, or like the Big Show? A seven. He's six foot seven, two hundred seventy five pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and you'll hear stories uh, about what show did to people, uh, you know, during the 90s, you know, right before the age of camera phones and when you could get away with it. And like just that people have done that. And, uh, you know, now they, that I'm an adult, didn't wake up. I was a fan of wrestling growing up. And now that I'm an adult, my favorite thing is the true stories, like finding out what the road stories and like the fights that happened and all that type oh, of crazy yeah. shit. And then you're like, wow, like I didn't know they were, wrestling was that crazy when I was a kid. The 80s was lit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but I mean, the, 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 the amount of girls that come with wrestling, too, are, are pretty. Steve would tell me some things. Well, they call them rats, right, Jake? Oh, did we lose them? Well, oh, no, uh, no, I'm still here. They call them rats in the wrestling business, right? 
I, I don't. That's a, that's a dirty side of pro wrestling that yeah. I can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> He's married, dude. What are you trying? Try, I'm stand, just saying that's what they call him. That's trying to get you in trouble, dude. No, What's I was just deal? telling Dennis. So dude, did, I'm sick of this guy. Anybody ever try you? Like, you know, be like, I think they can kick your ass. You ever get into any altercations with any other pro wrestlers? No comment. You know, I, uh, <laughs> they, they, they called me shooter because they, they believe my, my, my shit was real. <laughs> uh, and, and, and hopefully I prove that on Saturday. Oh yeah. Well, it happens a lot. I've heard a lot of stories in pro wrestling about how there's it's a t- testosterone-filled locker room, so people get into it sometimes. Same as I'm sure you know, in the UFC. You know, when I first got there, was a whole hierarchy. Hey, you better go say hi to this guy. Um, kind of old tradition that they try to pass down. Uh, you know, they say to make you respect it. Um, but you know, as I was there longer, it was more of uh, a new generation, new roster where uh, everybody really was working together because we were cool. I'm like, we've been on the road together so much, it's more like a family than than co-workers. Yeah. So, so I mean, you're making solid money in WWE, you have a great name. What makes you go, you know what, I want to start fucking people up in real life? Uh, you know what, it's, it's like anything. Um, I didn't know right away what my value was, but it, over the course of 12 years and a couple of contract negotiations and knowing what other wrestlers were getting paid and advice that I've gotten from top guys like Undertaker and Mysterio who, who handle those big contracts, I determined what my value was and they weren't meeting it and I couldn't change it from the inside. They always said like to grab the brass ring, you know, be different. But, like, at the same time, I felt like they were purposely keeping me down so they could only pay me. A right, certain amount. right. You know, so I was like, all right, well, pitch this idea. I said, let me act like I'm leaving. Let's have a feud. I'll go to MMA and I'll, I'll get a couple of minutes. And then, you know, we can go from And they, they were like, nah, we don't think you can do that. And so I was they like, told okay. you that they, they don't think you can do that? Oh, they didn't say that exactly, but... But, bro, that's so uh, motivating. Yeah. That's what I love when people are like, yeah, right, good luck, Dennis. Like, what the fuck did you just say? Watch this now, you exactly. little fucking bitch. <laughs> yeah, you don't think I can... You don't think I'm good at everything I try? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it was a lot of time to go. Been there 12 years. It was just kind of right time, right place. And that was... Uh, you know, the motivation I needed to, to get out of there. Nice. And now it's on your schedule, though, too. It's good for the family and stuff like that, right? Yep, yep. So independent wrestling is doing real well right now. The only drawback to that is the inconsistency. Some months uh, you, you're you not working as much as, like, the summer months. And then if you get a cancellation, it's hard to, you know, you know, keep that. Uh, it's hard to replace that cancellation. Uh, if, you, if they cancel like the third Saturday of a month, you know, right before it, it's like, well, there's just money that I'm not going to have this month. So the unexpectedness of it is definitely rough, and you need to uh, almost have another job. Really? Because the the big, I mean, just like it, just, like just like an MMA, like the big dogs are the guys getting paid, but they're get, and and it's my understanding in 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 pro wrestling that they make most of their money off of the merchandise, not actually their contract. Well, yeah, yeah, and and there's more avenues now than ever to sell your merchandise. Right. But but there's the royalties up there aren't aren't very much. Unless you're a big dog, and even then, they don't like to negotiate a lot. You just sell a lot, and that's how you make the money. But your percentage is very low, um, like under 2%. How did Bellator come out? You got a good uh, deal with Bellator? I feel like I did. I, I, I feel like I saw a trend of uh, fighters that I liked and um, um, admired moving to Bellator. So it was, it was the best offer at the time, and uh, they were willing to work. Uh, with my schedule, knew that coming off TV, I had a lot of money to make on the independent scene, so they let me grab that up and then slowly, slowly wrestle less and train more. And um, 
you know, it was about a year and a half progress that they worked with us on, so it, it was great. I feel like uh, we're going to get a nice bonus uh, when the ratings come out from uh, Bellator 214. So nice, nice. Fingers crossed. Good for you. What I mean, what do you think about CM Punk? Because, I mean, you have, like, a background in martial arts and, like, hitting people and being aggressive and being an athlete. Like, CM Punk, on the other hand, doesn't but was giving the opportunity where I was like, man, I don't know, man. I don't – like, at least, like, Brock Lesnar was the Division One, you know, national champion. You know what I'm saying? Like Bob, The guy Bobby Lashley is a big time, like, an AIA or a Olympic wrestler yeah. as well. Like they're right. Really- and, he, and he looks like a killer. Well, this is, I think this is a great question for you, Dennis. Uh, uh, you know, he lost, but how much money did he make? He has uh, he made two million dollars, and he has no business being in a fight where two million dollars is on the table. You know, right? And it's it's like at that aspect, he kind of won. You know. Well, yes, but I I mean it's it's frustrating to me because I put in a decade of work and I didn't bet. see that. You know what I mean? That kind of money, but I also get the business aspect of it like the wwe side of it where like yo this dude has a fucking million followers how many you have dennis Thirty thousand. all right shut up yeah, yeah and it's like fuck man it shouldn't be like that you know like no i'm an no, animal and i'll beat him up myself <laughs> but he makes way more than me you know it's but it's tough you know like i mean that doesn't happen in the nfl if you don't win in the nfl you don't get paid like brad pitt can't be like yo I want to be the quarterback. Like, sorry, bro. You're not. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? We, we might see Logan Paul jump into MMA, and I'm sure he's going to get paid 500000 or something stupid like that. It, You know, it's something about the idea of fighting that, you know, you can kind of talk yourself into, oh, no, he he might be able to do this, you know? Yeah, he and, wrestled. He was a D1 wrestler, I'm pretty sure, or a D2 wrestler. He, he might have a legit background, but I'm saying he could bring millions of potential viewers, so they'll yeah. be like, all right. Yeah. I should start yeah. my own fighting organization called, like, Real Life Celebrity Deathmatch, where I bring in, like, you know, big YouTubers, celebrities, whatever, fo- ex-football players, whatever. And, like, all right, like, here you guys go. You know, like, I'll ask the fans, like, who do you want to see fight next? They've all presented, you know. Even if it was just sparring, you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people would be... Well, they have that. You're just going to start putting on your own shows, I yeah, guess. Yeah, fuck off, Stan. All right, well. I'm going to get bigger people. Jake Hager, we want to thank you for joining us. Everybody knows how to find you, but if you want to let our following know how to find you, go right ahead. Uh, yeah, Instagram, Real Jack Swagger. Twitter's the same. Facebook's under Jake Evil Hager. Uh, trying that out as a nickname, I don't know. Here we go. Um, <laughs> follow my wife, though, because she'll show you her butt, and she's way funnier and, uh, than me. Real Catalina Hager. Instagram and Twitter, and uh, you know, if you if you're a busy mom on the go, you don't know where to work out. Check out the Catalina technique. The link is in my profile. I like it, dude. All right, everybody, <laughs> check it out. And Jake Hager, next time you book this uh, your next Bellator fight, we'd love to get you on the show again. Shoot some more shit about the pro wrestling past and the MMA future. Awesome, man. Thank you, guys. What a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you again, dude. Jack Swagger, Jake Hager. Take it easy, my man. See you guys. Tell you what, I really like talking to that Jen. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, way fucking cooler than you. He's a way better guy than you. What'd you say? He's a way better guy than me? Yeah. Yeah, all right, well, in your opinion. I don't really think your opinion matters too much, but... Ooh, what the fuck, Stan? What'd they be saying over there? Who? I don't know the guy you're talking to. I was seeing if David Branch is still good. We ran a little bit behind with... um. We, and Jack Swagger. We, we ran a little bit behind or over? Over. Behind, okay. over. Well, Jack Swagger came in a little bit late, so we figured I'd give him at least this half hour that we were going to do with him. Got you. Got you. Yeah, we flowed pretty nice with him, man. I thought that was... Well, he's probably yeah. done endless interviews. So well, hang on. I definitely think our interview with him was much different well, than Well, that's what I was going to say. If he does endless interviews, then he came to Menace and the Man. Yeah. He was like, whoa, this is like some fresh shit. Like, what? I know I was supposed to give you guys 10 minutes, but how about if I go for... I don't even want to leave. You guys want to just keep me here? So Yeah. No, I think I think uh, you ended the segment at, like, a very appropriate Yeah, but time. I could have went endless stories. It seems like, yeah, I definitely hope I didn't offend his wife or offend Jack. Hopefully I didn't start a fight with them when I was like, yeah, the rats. And, like, you know, it's like, yeah, that rat. Oh, yeah. Because, I, cause, I mean, I did hear a lot of stories about, like... Uh, it's big in wrestling. Yeah. 
and it's because I mean it, it's it's Rick Flair, man. Think of Rick Flair's been no, knock, Rick Flair's been knocking them down well, since the seventies. Well, hear me out, because because professional wrestling has been around forever, right? So yeah. like I get asked the question a lot, like, "Yo, man, like you must get girls." I'm like, "Well, not." I mean, there are some, but the thing is, is like. Football players get a ton of girls because they've been watching football with their dad since they were, like, four. You know what I'm saying? So they grew up like, oh, my God, football players are, like, amazing. MMA is still very, very new where, like, the only girls that watch MMA watch it because they're watching with, like, their boyfriend. Or their friend fights and they make a night out of it type thing. Yeah. Right, right. There's not too many girls because it's still very new that have grown up watching MMA. We're like, or, or even like when a girl fights, she has a girlfriends that come out. Those are some of the girls that go. Right. For instance, like this weekend that um, Chrissy from Long Island MMA fought, she had a bunch of girls in the crowd. I'm talking about like I'm sure even at the UFC, UFC when, Ashley, about- when Ashley Evan Smith, if she fought in California, she wouldn't have, you know. All her girlfriends and whatnot. Yes, but again, like it's it's a very small yeah, group of people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're only coming for a reason. Like the core audience is. Yeah, not men. because they've always watched it since they were four. Yeah. That's my. So, like, wrestling's been around forever. They've been watching with their dad. Oh my God, Jack Swagger or, you know, Steve Blackman, whoever, you know, like. And also, those two sports I talked about, like, you know, you're 6'5, you're 250. I'm 5'6", 170, yeah. where, like, I can, I look, I'm, I'm the smallest guy in this room right now. So for me to go up to a girl and be like, I'm in the UFC, like, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> like, you look like that guy over there, that small guy over there. Whereas, like, if you're a football player or a WWE wrestler, you're humongous, like, I'm in the, I'm in the NFL, like, yeah. Yeah, you, you are. You're 6'5", you're pretty jacked, like, yeah, you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of jiu-jitsu players that uh, say they're MMA fighters to, like, you know, sound appealing to a girl. Mm-hmm. Or people do, like, the, the little bit of training. And they're like, yeah, I'm a fighter. It's like, oh, yeah. you're a fighter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could throw it one, two. I train at Long Island <laughs> MMA. Yeah. Duh. I'm an MMA fighter. I'm a fighter. Yeah. But then the reality is, it's like, no, you don't want that brain damage. You don't want that on you, you know? Yeah. Um... So, yeah, when I first got in the UFC, I thought it was going to be a very, very powerful tool to tell girls I'm in the UFC. And I quickly found out it wasn't. <laughs> I remember one time I was, you know, a little intoxicated at Fire Island. And I told this girl, like, I'm in the UFC. She goes, so? Uh. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, like, Google me. <laughs> but even there, like, who knows what, it's also what she's into. Yeah, she would definitely not be into the UFC. Uh. Or, or, like, I'm in the UFC. What's that? Like, ah, oh, fuck. Next one, next one. Move yeah, on, move on. Yeah. So, hang on. After that weekend, I think I stopped using that, that line. What you need to do, or needed to okay, do. Okay, here we go. Let's have your wingman use that line. Be like, yeah, this is my friend, and don't say he's in the UFC. You know what? We shouldn't call Gian right now. Lamonte? Yeah. Well, we can call him or Dave Branch. We could try to call Dave Branch. Yeah, yeah, I'll think... t- yeah call, try, try and get Dave Branch. Um, I'll, I'll text Gian and we'll see what his moves are. But again, he's a big guy. You know, so we're like, I'm in the UFC. Yeah, you're a big guy. Yes, you are. And he almost was in the NFL type thing. So we got to yeah. find, like, who's the, who could be the woman guru that we could have on for the littler guy? That's what we need to find. I mean. I, I think it would be Kawajiri. Remember Kawajiri? Kawajiri is like a Japanese pimp. I mean, probably in Japan, right? Yeah, we got to get him to translate. <laughs> He's probably got all the answers. Uh, I'm trying to think of a small guy that probably crushes. Oh, Uriah Faber. Oh, oh of course, Faber. Yeah, yeah, Faber probably crushes. It's got to be the flow. Yeah. All right, let's try David Branch, see if he picks up. I'm going to hit the urination station. All right. Oh, well, then I'll wait for you to get back. No, just call him and talk to him. I'll be right back, dude. I'll give it the one minute. Man, uh, what are you going to talk about until I get back? What I talk about on the one episode when everyone hated it. Oh, my God. Go ahead, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat my Slim Jim. Just enjoy myself. Oh, man. What an idiot Dennis is. That's what I'll talk about for the minute. What an idiot Dennis is. All right. Uh, I guess I can reprise something from last week. I'd like to thank Dennis for a cool $30 <laughs> on the fights. <laughs> what do you mean? 
We were talking about how Algeria's coach bet on him. Mm-hmm. I bet on Dennis. Oh, cool. Did? cool 30 bucks. <laughs> nice. There you go. And how come you didn't bring that up? I was trying to, but let's be real. Let, 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 let the champs talk over here. <laughs> the opportunity never presented itself? Yeah, yeah. Um, that would have been a great anecdote, though. It would have been. But this is this is the, the filler we need right now, Stan. This is the filler Especially that we when, need. Especially when Rockhold was like, I won seven grand. You could have been like, I won 30 bucks on Dennis. <laughs> I did, Dennis. I did. What? I won 30 bucks on you, my man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I was a slight underdog. Right. Would you, would you bet to win 30? Whatever it was on that menu that said win $30. <laughs> what did Ellenberger say? What time? Uh, well, he um, actually hit me back. was like, yo, man, sorry. Scheduling. My son's got a fever. Had to run him to the doctors. All right. Let's try David Branch. <clears throat> He might ghost us now. We never, we never called Brainy. I want to hear that ring back. Mm. Hello. Your call has been forwarded to an Fuck automatic off. voice message system. We'll Two, five, six, four, right, one. You, you it's not message. available. At the tone, please Are record you? your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. What's going on, David Branch? Stan the Man here from Menace and the Man. We tried calling you, and uh, we didn't get you. We got your voicemail, so say hello, Dennis. Hi, David. You guys know each other at all? Yeah. Yeah, so we were just trying to, you know, shoot the shit with you, Dave. Give us a call back. I miss you. I miss you. We, we both missed you. We really wanted you on the show this week, but uh, maybe uh, give us a call a little later or next week. Well, see you later. <clears throat> I actually forgot about Jesse Jess. And you, did you? What about, what about her? I think you're gonna text her right now. Yeah, she might be training. Uh uh-uh. uh Okay. Now what the fuck? How the fuck did that? Go ahead, Stan. Talk to the people. Why? What are you? Tell doing? me about how you're gonna raise your kids, Stan. I'm not gonna raise any kids. I'm not stupid. Oh. I'm not going to sucker some chick into that horrible journey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dude. Well, even I, I had this conversation with one of my friends actually earlier today because he's like neurotic. Like he's one of those dads that like chases his kid to the room. He's like, don't climb on that. You'll fall. You'll break your arm. You know what I mean? Like, so like my cousin has a kid and she's the opposite. She's like, go in there, climb. And if you fall, you're going to, you know, it's whatever. You'll learn your lesson the hard way. My sister at three kids in is not like that. Like, I'm like, oh, my God, he's hanging from the, the chandelier. He'll fall and he'll learn his lesson, you know? What if he breaks his leg? Then I guess I got to take him to the hospital, you know? <laughs> you know, one of my favorite lines that it makes a lot of people uncomfortable, like, how is he going to learn? Yeah. How is he going to learn? Yeah. Me yelling at him not to do it, he's probably going to want to do it more. He's going to say, oh, well, let me push this a little further, you know? No, I say it just because I'm an idiot. I think it's funny. That's how little kids are, you know? They don't know yet. How is he going to learn? He's going to... I'm not going to take your word for it. I don't, you know. Sometimes you learn the best way the hard way. Absolutely. I think that's how people learn the best way, the hard way. Absolutely. You have to figure it out. Rather than someone telling you. Like someone telling you, you're not going to have the actual field experience. But actually, there was crazy MMA news. That's actually what we should talk about is today. Let's hear it. <clears throat> um, Khabib got fined, suspended, I think, six months or nine months. Nine months for Khabib. Nine months, half a mil, half a million, and then they gave they fined Connor fifty G's and a six month suspension. That's it. What Connor gets suspended for? For punching Agmar Abu Dhabi. Oh, Abu Dhabi. Oh, the, oh, got you. And I guess almost inciting the fight or whatever, whatever his involvement was after the fight. And Dylan Dennis is still waiting for his punishment. And then another thing, I think today too, they like said, you know what, John Jones. Just do steroids. We're cool. <laughs> We're good with that. If you fail for the same thing, I think they said something like they gave him a conditional license, and they said if he fails for the same steroid again leading into this fight, they're fine with it. It's pretty much the thing. It's pretty much the vibe I was getting from what I was reading. Do you think the technology is that good, or is getting that much better, or do you think there's something fishy there? Well, it's even like we were speaking about last week. There's always things that there's a system. There's a room full of people designing the new drug, you know. And then there's a room full of people that work for the government or USADA that are like, oh, no, we got to figure out how to test this new thing, you know, figure out how to catch this new thing. 
Jesse Jess said um, that uh, she just finished at the gym and she can't talk right now. She's only on 16%. And I told her I'm going to call you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what if she gives us the Dillashaw treatment, just hangs up on us? Nah. Just uh, be like, we want to know how things are down under. Well, she's going to Australia next week, she said. So I was like, ah, we'll get you next week. Hello. Jesse Jess! <laughs> how you doing? What's up, girl? What's going how on? How are you? What's going on, Jesse Jess? Welcome to Menace and the Man. Thank you. I completely forgot I was doing this today. No, my bad. no it's a, it, this is not all your fault. This is partially my fault, too, because I told her I'd text her in the morning and like kind of remind her. And then she just said that back to me. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. I should have did that. Yeah. So next time I'll remind you to remind me. Yeah. So so I, I pretty much wanted her to just call, say hi, and just get people hyped that she's going to come on next week. Yeah. Let's keep it short and sweet. Huh? Yeah. I'm excited. What uh, what, what did you finish training just now? Uh, we just had sparring at the Performance Institute. Who are you sparring with? You but I forgot. About? I forgot my mouthpiece. So I didn't. I didn't do a whole lot. Right. That's the worst. I can't do anything without my mouthpiece. I had trouble hitting the bag without my mouthpiece. Yeah, I'm the same. And I just spent like as soon as I got signed by the USC, I spent a very large amount of money fixing my teeth. So now I'm super paranoid Ooh. about hurting them again. Yeah. So I won't do. Sh- I won't do anything without it. Yeah. Um. So you're going back to Australia. Yeah, for Melbourne, for the Melbourne card. Nice. We're going out with Monster. Who do some appearances and, yeah, hang who, out and be good. Who watches the dogs when you go to Australia? My housemate. Oh, she, she's go. pretty good with it. They don't, they don't like her as much as they like me, but she's good to them. Yeah, I, see on, I follow you on Instagram and I see that you're just in love with the dogs. Oh, yeah, I love my dogs. One I'm, of the blue, I brought back Tim Tams from Australia to give to my coaches. And this morning I was showering and Blue ate a whole packet of Tim Tams. What? And then she was really, yeah, she's, and now she's really sick because they're all chocolate cookies, but I just made her sit outside because she did it to herself. Yeah. Silly bitch. How's she going to learn? We were just talking about that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it wasn't enough chocolate to like hurt her, but she did eat a whole packet of chocolate cookies. Yeah, they're so dumb. So dumb. Uh. They're delicious, though. I don't blame her. Right. Those cookies are amazing. Right. <laughs> You're mad because you couldn't eat them if she ate them, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I bought them for my coaches, but they've been taunting me. So I was kind of happy that she ate them because it got them out of my house. Right. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Um, all right. So I'm going to have a bunch of a series of questions for next week. What? 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 Okay. What time is in Australia when it's like... Six to nine here ish. Uh, What's the I'm time difference? It out. As, as soon as I get off the phone to you, I'm going to look at what the time is there right now. It should be like lunchtime, I want to say. Well, I have some uh, computer wizards here. It's 12 Yeah, so PM Google, just Google what time is it in it's, Melbourne it's, right now. It's 12, it's 12 right now? 12 noon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So that's perfect. So what's that, eight hour difference? Hey. Uh, well, it seems like there's a couple of different time zones in Australia as well. Uh, in Melbourne, it's 12.02 p.m. And it's yeah. n- tomorrow. Oh. Tomorrow, So that's yeah. eight hours plus 12. That's 20 hours. Yes, it'll be 12 o'clock on Wednesday for the out there. Wow, so you're gonna be in the, we're going to be speaking to you, and you're already going to be in the future, dude? <laughs> dude! Okay, so you got to make sure you ask me some questions about the future. All right, like, but only what? about 24 hours into the future. This wow. Is gonna be 20 hours into the future, yeah. Dude, I'm hype about this right now. Yeah. I feel like this is like some, like, uh... We're on like, some next level shit now. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. I'm excited to hear what you come up with. Yeah. Um, should I drink beers during our talk or no? Should you what? Drink beers during our talk or no? You can drink as many beers as you want. Is it going to make you funnier? Uh, hmm. It's hearsay. Yeah, that's hit or miss. <laughs> hearsay. Yeah, you can have as much beer as you want. Well, the thing is, I like, right, I'm retired now, and I'm, like, taking care of my body, like, more after a fight than I would if I wasn't retired. Yeah. Is that crazy? I'm, like, working, <laughs> I'm working, like, backwards. Like, right now, yeah, if I... Yeah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 
Well, so maybe is, you're like, you can enjoy stuff more because you don't have to do it. Right. I think that's what it is. It's like, I like binge on things because I know yeah. that I have, to, I'm not going to be able to have it later. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, now I'm I trying to do, exactly it. I'm trying to do a lifestyle thing now. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, okay. I understand that. I'm gonna save some things for you. Oh yeah, we'll be, we'll be super okay. prepared. Charge your battery up so we can go. Yeah, have a yeah. Bit more time. I will. Well, okay, Dennis, you gotta message me early though. I will. I will. I will. I <laughs> will. What percentage are you on your battery right now? Uh, hold up. Ten. Ten. All right, so we're still good. We don't want to totally ju- juice her out, though, yeah, so, you know. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Jesse, Jess, it was nice having you on, and we're going to have you on next week, and it's going to be amazing. Yes, yeah, in the future. All right, awesome. I will talk to you next week from Excellent. the future. All right, enjoy your night. All right. Bye, guys. Take it easy. She's such a little sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Huge crush on Jesse, Jess. You do? Oh, of course. Wow. Look at her. She's adorable. She is. Tatted up little Australian girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a sucker for accents. I'm a su- that's what it is too. I'm a sucker for accents. I'm just, I'm trying to think of an accent that sucks on a girl though. Like Joanne Calderwood too gets me too. She has like little Scottish accent. But yeah, no word back from David Branch. Well, I mean, we can we can shut it down. We could. We could talk. Well, what do we? What else could we talk about? Mm. Dennis, you really didn't hit it so much last week. But now that you are retired, what are you looking to do besides this lifestyle change we were just talking about? Ooh, well, that's what it was. Good question. Because we were going to have Ellenberger come. We were actually going to have the flare on, too, and we were going to kind of make this little retirement episode. That's why we were going to try to do an hour earlier, but then that one show was been before us. Yeah, but we can also save this episode for when we get them on and talk about retirement. Yes and no. Uh, why, well, you don't want to talk anymore? Oh, no. I'm, I'm game. I just, yeah. I, don't know. I just feel like the fans, they hear me every episode, you know? Yes and no. They also don't hear these type of questions every episode, you know. All right. Where we um, them. So I'm looking to get a real job, and uh, I've been applying around. I tried for the Silver County Water Authority. Um, I actually got the job, and I declined the, the, the job because they wanted me to start January 8th, but I was like, man, before I start this new career, I want to fight one more time. Mm-hmm. The fight was January nineteenth, so good thing I said no. But but I I didn't I wasn't like, yo go screw yourself. Like I'm like hey I have some things coming up. I'm gonna have to decline this job. They have multiple jobs, you know. So I think the door is open, for you know they already did like you know the background checks and all those things. And I'm um, a solid candidate, you know. Um, I work hard, so comes with good recommendations. Yeah, and then I've been also working on. The um, getting into the PSEG as a lineman, an apprentice lineman, and um, it's a great job. And I also think you know, like it's you, you gotta be, you gotta be sharp, you gotta be witty. You know, you can't, you know, like like fighting. I can't show up hungover and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll be hanging from a pole and stuff like that. I think that's cool. And and during what like the like you know kind of the interviews and stuff like that they were telling me more about the job like. You're kind of like a superhero. Like a storm comes, like when a storm comes in, I'm going out. Yeah. Like it's lightning and high winds. Like I'm like, all right, let's do work. Let's, let's, like I'm not afraid of this, you know, or other people are hunkering down and getting bread and water. I'm putting my boots on. Yeah. So I think that's pretty badass. And I actually fell asleep watching a movie. I got to finish it. It's called On the Line or something like that. It's about alignment and John Travolta's in it. Never seen it, never heard of it. I never, I was on Hulu and I saw I was like, oh man, this new, is what I want to get into. A new There's movie a movie or, about it. New movie or old movie? I think a newer movie. Newer movie? You know? And I'm like, all right. So now, would you ever want to own a gym or not something that you're interested in? So, I mean, ha, no, I'm definitely interested in it, but I, I know, like, the money's in women and children, and yes, I have like charisma to me and, and high energy, which women and children like. But like, there's also money in adults though too. Yes. Once you build a program. Yes. Um. But like, I because I was a personal trainer for some time, and I'm just like, being a personal trainer, like people are like you just watch people work out, you just like show them how to work out all day. Like, no, you have to like. 
bring the energy that they don't have. Yeah. Like, you can do this. Like, come on. And, like, the thing is, I don't give a fuck if you can do it or not. I'm trying to get paid. Mm-hmm. So I'm legit acting for eight hours. And it's, like, super fatiguing. But what about that? Do you think you could ever get into acting? Fuck yeah, dude. Have you ever tried? Um, I don't know if you know this, but I was a reality TV star. Of course. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I need, well, I mean, I applied for, my manager got me uh, an, a, a tryout, if you will, for uh, a small role on CSI, mm-hmm. where they, like, came and I was, like, a gym owner. And, like, I had the, and I went in and I feel like I, I nailed it, dude. I feel like I nailed it. And they had, they had a little camera there and I had to do it into the camera. And I just never heard anything back. And I was like, man, that sucks. Mm. I was hyped for this. What was the character? What was uh, He was a gym owner. The girl that had gotten murdered um, trained at that gym. And they came and, like, hey, did you see such and such yesterday? And I'm like... Yeah, like, she was a good girl, and, like, you, you think I have something to do with it, and shit like that, you know? This is, goes back, like, a couple of years. Yeah. Now, like, maybe, like, three years. So, uh, I forgot the lines. If I, if, oh, man, if I remember the lines, you know I'd be fucking spitting that shit out, dude. Yeah, I feel like that could be a route. Or also, once, as Menace the Man keeps going up, because that's where we are on, is an upward trajectory. Yeah, um, my manager wants me to do more YouTube, and, like, he says the podcast, the podcast is great and all, but... I have this element the way I talk and the way I move and, like, my, like... We need to go visual. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's what I've been on. I wanted to go visual. We were planning on possibly going visual that episode that you sat, that you missed. And then we were just like, all right, if Dennis ain't going to be in studio, we'll just not even worry about it right now. So now I'm retired. I have a little more t- time on my hands. We'll bring the, you know, come over. We'll get the gear. Yeah, and it, that's what it is. It's a matter of trial and error. We just got to figure it out type Yeah. Thing. Yeah. We're going to get it going here for the new year. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing is, is, like, I'm sitting here, I'm talking. Like, yes, there will be some visuals, like, Gian, yeah, kick me, you know, like. But I'm saying me going out and doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have, well, I mean, I'm again, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my own. Well, that's like I said to you. We could, if you did that, like Menace Tube or Menace and the Man, even myself, like I know compared myself to other journalists, like if you stood up and asked a question, it'd be totally different. Yeah, like if there's a camera on here and like I'm messing with you and like we're going back and forth, I'm definitely like getting on top of the table and like attacking you. I, o- only because there's a camera. I Not because I really want to like, attack you. <laughs> like the, some of the things I've seen you do, like the UFC athlete retreat when you did the NFL thing. When you were interviewing people. Oh, right, right. Yeah, like, I think you should do things right. like that. Like, even, I could see you, WME dropped the ball with you. They should have put you on, like, some red carpet shit. Yeah. You should be at the Grammys asking, you know, have, yeah. do you know what do you know about UFC? Right. What do you know about MMA? Because the thing is, is over time I've gotten very good at, like, not getting nervous talking to high-profile people because I'm, like, I'm with you. I'm like one of you. I was you. just going to say, you think you're a high-profile person. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, I mean, there's there's definitely some confidence in being like, You know, yo. there's like Martha Stewart, Warren Buffett, Dennis Bermudez. You know, that's the way it yeah, goes. Like, yeah, but like the difference between the two of them is like, I'll fuck both of them up. Yeah. I'm wait, like, well, I'm not afraid well, wait, of you. You're not going to hit Martha. Yeah. You'll fuck up Warren Buffett. Though. Yeah, but like I could give her a look <laughs> of intimidation <laughs> You she's, know, bro, she's done more jail time than no. you. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is hey, Martha, this is Dennis Bermudez. He's a former UFC fighter. I think she knows what UFC is. Where yeah. she might be, like, oh, she okay. Might be, she might be a little intimidated. Yeah. No, not saying she's intimidated, but like, or she might size you up and be like, he doesn't look like much. You know, I I don't believe he's in the UFC. <laughs> yeah, I don't even believe you. Anyways, fuck off. Um. No, I just, I just, like, you could be a, a millionaire, a successful millionaire, you could be a Joe Schmo, and I'm, I think I could, I can talk to people, um, very equally and not be intimidated to ask them certain, you know, questions, you know yeah. what I mean? A lot of people from the last episode were like, man, the way you were speaking to TJ, and he's a high profile guy, what I think was amazing. Yeah. You know, like, you, you weren't stuttering, you, you were confident in your questions, you know? I'm like, 
Yeah, dog. That's what I do, dog. Yeah. You know? So, also, I need to reach out to Dana and be like, yo. When are you coming? I know I'm retired, but I don't want to be retired with the UFC. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm done fighting, let like think of me, dude. If you need a commentator, if you want me to, you know, do some stuff, like I'm, I'm, de- I'm, I'm game. Yeah. You know, so I need to text him maybe on the ride home. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's usually what happens is like I, t- I, I'll say like, oh, Dennis, why don't you hit up this person, and then he'll kind of like put it off, and then once we get together, be like, oh, should I hit this person up? Yes, right now, please yeah. do it. Yes, right now, do it, Dennis. Yeah. So Dana, get ready for my text. Dennis gets jazzed up by the, you know, he starts the show here. He goes up a little bit. He gets all jazzed up and confident. And then he's like, next week, let's go for the stars, you know? Dude, as soon as you do a good show, there's nothing really, you know, that'll motivate you more to yeah. do another good one. Right, yeah. right. Um, and we're spitting hot fire. Yeah. So far, I think. So, I mean. Except for those pe- few people who apparently don't like listening to me talk to Joe. Yeah. When Dennis yeah, is yeah. Yeah, so how, how rough were they on that one? Thanks a lot, Shannon Briggs. Well, I mean, they're just like, mm, like, we don't really care about Stan. Like, I mean, he's got some good. No, like, you're not a, you're not an MMA like pro fighter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're a person. You're my buddy. I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, all right, like, we kind of tune in. To, like, here what your professional fighting like intel on things. Well, I is. would say I'm a knowledgeable MMA journalist. Well, no, no, point. I, I, I rebuttal them with like, hey man, like Stan pays way more attention to MMA than I do. So I think he's really great in that aspect of asking fighters like he knows who they fought, how they lost, how they won, how the fight went, where like, Dennis, you watch the fights, like, uh I was training or or whatever. Or like I you know, because I'm fighting myself, like I don't want to tune in. To every every fight, you know what I mean? Like, when I would watch 145ers fight, I would be at home, like, shaking because I'm like, oh, I might have to fuck this guy up. Yeah, you want to fight. Like, yeah. like, this guy, he's in the UFC. Like, I know he wants a piece of me. Like, I'm sizing. Like, that's not a very comfortable thing to do on your own couch is, like... Yeah. Shake and get like you know. Give yourself anxiety. Not anxiety, but like I'm ready to. I'm I'm primed up. You know. Oh, yeah. Do you get like that when you watch other weight classes, or was it just exclusively your own? Um, big one thirty fivers that could potentially go one four one one uh, forty five or small fifty fivers that could drop down. It was just like you know. <laughs> or or me going up, like, all right, like, you know, I can maybe go up to the 55 and fight this guy, you know. Always, always motors were but, always but, running. But 170, 125, and, and 170 and up, like, all right, I can sit here and actually relax and watch this fight. But some of those 55ers and, and 35ers and 45ers, I'm like, all right, like, I get primed up and I'm really taking in what's going on here, almost like I'm cage side, you know. Yeah. Do you think that's going to continue now that you're retired, or do you think you'll no. finally be able to just veg? What I don't want to happen, <laughs> and I can see it happen, get a few cervezas in me, and be like, oh, this fucking slob, I'll fuck him up. Get going, get get the Twitter fitters going, Twitter fingers. Yeah. Hey, Sean Shelby, give me Joe Schmo. he's a fucking schlum. Well, like... <laughs> So like I'm not gonna do that. How'd you feel last week mentally doing like or two weeks ago doing was it last week doing that little media tour you did like doing five or six interviews about you know retirement after the fight? Yeah, when I mean, you did the little media tour, you did Hawani, you did all oh, those shows. They were so, it was nice, man. You know, like the question of who do you want next wasn't on the horizon or like what are you gonna change for next fight camp and and you know. It was like, what are you going to do next? Like, what the fuck I want? Yeah. That's a nice, that's cool. To say. It's nice to say that. Now, <laughs> hopefully in like eight months, like, what are you, Dennis, what are you doing? And I'm not like, whatever the fuck I want. Like, hopefully, like, one of these jobs really <laughs> lines up nice for me, you know, where I'm not at the, the gym holding mitts like, hey, yeah, I had, to, I had to up the price a little bit. You know, times are tough. <laughs> yeah. Remember how it was uh, 100, now it's like $500 packages now? Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, that's where, and I, I thought about it like today where I was like, man, Dennis, really enjoy this time right here when like you can like wake up when you want and do what you want, you know, cause like, you know, 
hopefully in like two months, like you're like waking up at seven because you got to be out the door by eight, you know, and then having a schedule. Um, but in terms of being successful, like I'm still like, like tonight before I fall asleep, I'm going to kind of have a list of things I want to get done the next day, mm-hmm. you know, um, go collect some money, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, um, train, you know, well, not necessarily train, like workout. So now what do you think about that? So if you start a seven to three or seven to four job, do you think you're going to be doing like the five, six in the morning thing? Um, I'll see, I'll see how training, I, I'll you know see I mean? how I feel. You know, it might be, yeah, maybe, maybe some days I'll bang out an early session before I go to work, or I'll at least try it, see how I feel at work, you know, or after work, bang out some sessions, like, you know. H- have you tapered off the training since the fight? Well, my thumb's fractured from the fight. Is it? Yep. And um, so, like, my grip is shot, but I've been just editing my lifts, you know. Um, but the next goal I have for myself that I think is substantial is I want to run to Montauk from Long Island in the May. From Montauk, so Farmingdale to Montauk. Yeah, it's 88 miles. Run. Yeah, so like right now your eyebrows are raising, you're like, what? Well, 88 what? miles is a lot. I know 25 yeah. or what is it? What is a marathon? 24. 26.2. 26. 26. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Because um, for me, I want to be able to tell my kids... Like, when we're going out to Montauk one day, like, yeah, I ran out here one day. I, I, I almost died running out here one day. The, well, the thing is, is I'm going to prepare for it. Yeah. Like, right now, I could put my sneakers on and run to Montauk from here. I know I could do it. With just mental fortitude. Yes. Yeah. But I would definitely get fucked up. Yeah. Like, my toenails would probably fall off. Like, because I was listening to a motivational, like speaker or whatever, and this guy, like, I think he's, like, the only guy that was a Navy SEAL. And he all. was in Navy SEAL school three times. Let me pull up his name. I know exactly who you're talking about. <clears throat> he was, like, a ranger. He was, like, the special forces of every department, which has never been done, no? You made me think of two different people. Because the one I'm talking about was the world uh, record holder for pull-ups in a day. Yeah, I mean, we might be, I don't know. And right. Anyways, it's crazy. And, like, this guy was talking. He was like, yeah, one day I just got off the couch and I ran 100 miles. David Goggins. Yeah, I ran 100 miles. And, like, he's like, you know, I was pissing blood and doing all these things. I'm like, damn. But he's like, I knew that if I didn't let my mind break that my body would be able to do it. And I'm like, man, that's pretty badass. How, how long do you think that would be? 88 miles. So I kind of determined that if I run a nine-minute mile for the whole 88 miles, it'd take 13 hours. Are you, are you going to be able to consistently run nine-minute nine miles, though? That's tough. I mean, I feel like – I mean, I, I, so uh, a nine-minute mile is like a pace of like, s- like just over six and a half miles per hour, which I think is – Have you ever done a marathon or anything? No. <laughs> Maybe that would fit, like, fuel well, the, no, I, Oh, no. I, I, I definitely plan on doing a marathon in preparation. I, I, they have triathlons and stuff on Long Island, like bikes, you know, the good, like, pretty good ones. Yeah. And I was talking to Gregor Gillespie, and I was telling him, like, yeah, one day I think I'm going to ride my bike out there. Just do it. He's like, don't do it. I'm like, He's Why? done it, yeah. Well, no, he's rode his bike out. Right. He's like, because on a bicycle, you're going 20 miles per hour, and it's going to take you forever, and you're going to be like, man. Running this would be, would be like, you'll start to second guess it a little bit. Where if you just go out there like on like a blind whim, like I'm going to do this. You're doing it then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's some craziness. You know, riding a bike out there, you can start to second guess like, man, this sucks. I'm going to run this? Like, uh, I don't know. That's where I'm at now in my physical therapy is I'm trying to run again. Because I was told never, you're never going to run again. Even from, like, the the surgeon who then said, oh, no, you're going to walk again. But running, hmm, that's up to you, you know. But that's what it is. Like, I run now, but it's like I'm fucked up still. I have to build myself back up into running. Love running. Right. But 88 miles sounds fucking insane. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be, like, fu- And then I thought about, well, you know, it's like run out there. I get there. There's a bunch of people there waiting for me. We, like, celebrate. We drink some beers, whatever. But, like... Who knows you, if I'll be up you, to that? You and LaFlair should start doing triathlons together. But LaFlair, no chance. LaFlair's done them. 
No, but no chances you're like, yeah, I want to start running. Like, it's pulling teeth to get that man to do, like, sprints for a fight. Who do you think <laughs> wants to fight first, you or him? Like, wants to make a comeback first, you or him? Ryan LaFleur, yes. Him first? Yeah. So you feel like you're really content in it? You yeah. don't want to fight anymore, you're done? Well, I mean, I've been competing at a high level for so long. I feel like you could be that outlier, too, though. Like, I'm sure there's other people who have done it, but getting out before it gets, you know... To that point, too, where you're staying too long. I know you said, you, yeah. even like LaFlair said that, he didn't want to be at the point where he's staying too long. Yeah. Because then it's like, you like you even said, you had 20 seconds in that fight where you were like, hmm, should I just let this guy win or? Yeah, like this sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when did you hurt the hand? To be honest with you? Don't know. I actually think in the back. Warming up. Warming up with Ryan. Because throwing some hooks, I was like, man. It's like, Ryan, can we turn it down like a notch? I think I'm like fucking like. I don't know, my hand kind of hurts a little bit. That's the only time where I'm like, man, my hand hurts. And then after the fight, in the back, I'm like, my hand hurts. I think I fractured it again. Yeah, so did the hospital special surgery on Long Island? Yeah. Where is that one? Uh, Uniondale. And was that UFC they sent you there? Yep. So now what did they say when you went there? So I go in there. They do an x-ray. I'm sitting with a doctor. He's looking at x-ray. He's like, no, it look, looks good. I'm like, yeah. So you're telling me I'm just a pussy, huh? He's like, I don't, why do you think like that? I'm like, because, like, you're telling me I'm fine. I'm telling you my thumb hurts. I feel like a pussy. He's like, ah, oh, you guys like that. I'm like, I know. We're fucking sick in the head. So he's showing me where, because um, he, he's thinking now, because my thumb hurts and he doesn't see anything in the bones, that he thinks it's a ligament. So I'm like, all right. So he zooms in on the x-ray where the ligament attaches to the bone, and then he goes, oh. Yeah, it is fractured. I'm like, because there was, so what he was thinking is there's a ligament in your thumb that, you know, ligament touches bone to bone that if you tear the ligament, what the ligament, the part of the bone that the ligament is attached to, if the ligament gets ripped, it'll pull a piece of the bone with it. Yeah. And he was thinking maybe that happened. Um, they called me today and said, we have a script for you for physical therapy and a splint. I'm like, well, take that splint and fucking... Shove it up your ass. Yeah, no more a goddamn splint. If you're going to put a cast on it, cool. I'll, I'll take a cast, but I'm not wearing a splint where I have an option. Like, I'm an idiot. Yeah. So where is it? Which hand? Right hand? Left hand. Is it the bottom ligament or is it the top? It's it's the top. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, top. it's the top of the the first joint in your thumb closest... To your pointer finger. Yeah, that's common in fighters. A lot of people have problems. It's called like the ulnar collateral ligament. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Because there's no, there's no padding there. Yeah, and you punch, and if you the guy moves his head, right, that one, your thumb skipping. catches yeah. his head and not the rest of your fist. Yeah, and with that, your little fucking thumb stands no chance. Yeah, I'm no throwing, chance. I'm throwing heat. Yeah, well, even that warming up, so shaking it out, you. Didn't think like, oh, my hand's broken. You just throw it like a little Well, I mean, you know, I am preparing myself. You know, I'm okay with dying. Like, right. it's it's in in a in a fist fight or in an MMA fight. Like, it becomes survival. You know what I mean? Like, you can talk to anybody who's ever been any Joe Schmo who's been in a street fight. Like, hey, Joe Schmo, did you smell the popcorn stand next to you? Like, no chance. Your body starts it the the senses that matter for survival get heightened and the ones that don't go away like you don't taste anything you don't smell anything your eyes get really like i think your eyes actually like dilate slightly um adrenaline starts running to the muscles creating more blood flow um you don't feel as much you kind of get that like numbness to you yeah um and uh, I, re- I remember, actually, I was in a fight where I got hit and I was like, man, this kind of, like, that hurt, you know? And I went back and I spoke to um, my um, sports therapist that I was working with at the time. And um, he said, your body, like, your brain knows what's up, right? You can't fool your brain, you know? I mean, you can to a certain degree, but... Your body knows that when you enter that octagon or that cage, that, like, it's going down. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to be in trouble. Like, fear 
know what I mean? And the more you enter that octagon or a cage, the more comfortable your body becomes with it because it gets used to it. And now you're, these, these senses that were heightened when you first started fighting decrease. Yeah. You know, so when you get kicked, like, mm, that kind of hurt. You were or, at that point. Or maybe you get punched in the mouth and, like, maybe you taste blood, you know. Um, and I remember getting ready for a fight and I was telling the man I was getting nervous because I wasn't nervous. Well, even like we talked about with Algeria last week, you now are smarter. You're more of a fighter, so you calculate more. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. So, like, with all these things I'm saying, I'm like, I wonder what goes through Donald Cerrone's brain. I've heard he's scared shitless. He's very neurotic. We have to get him on. He, yeah. I heard he's neurotic before the fight. Like, he doesn't, you know. Yeah. I know, like, Brian Caraway, like, throws up almost before every fight. Yeah, I've heard Cerrone's actually been pretty open with it. That's actually the question we should ask him. And that's what he talks. I said, like, he just, the nerves, he feels like he's going to throw up, and he just doesn't deal with it well. He's like, I don't like fighting. I've heard him say that. I don't even like fighting. Which is crazy, because I know, like, one year, that dude fought, like, five or six times. Money. Bonuses, yeah. bonuses yeah. and money. You know, he, he, he went on that streak where he was getting bonuses. That's mm. why he fought five times. He loved that money. They were offering the fight. He wanted the money. He was like, yeah, I just bought an RV. I just bought... He has toys too. The way we're talking to Dillashaw about some toys, so I'm sure he. Oh yeah. He, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get a hold of him for next week. Yeah. Did we talk about your toy at all last week? Your new purchase? We'll, oh, we'll end yeah. on that note. Yep. Um, we so, did talk about it. No, yeah. I believe that was material for another. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, another so show. Wednesday of last week, picked up my kids, and I've always wanted one. And I got, like, so for you guys out there, like, if you know what a Honda Grom is, it's a 125cc street legal motorcycle. It only does, like, 65, you know, but it's fucking cool, you know. Um, it's pretty small. It's like, it's like a street legal mini bike. So I bought, like, it's, it's called a Benelli TNT 135. And then, you know, the sticker price is only tw- is, is $2,600. So I'm like, all right, like, it's not that bad. You know, like, you, you can swing that then, you know. And it makes me happy. So I fucking, I bought it, you know. And uh, it's been very cold. So I just go outside in the garage, I look at it, and then I go back inside. <laughs> or, like, I will ride it to, like, the like the store that's two blocks away because oh, so you my have, you my, have been able to ride a little bit. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm an animal, dude. Right. It's like 32 degrees. I'm like, I just I'm just gonna go buy two beers and or you know, so you know whatever you know. Uh, but like my hands start freezing up. I'm like, yikes. Yeah, you're bugging. When when he first bought it, I was like, what the? What, why'd you buy a motorcycle? It's like the dead of winter right now. It's actually gonna get cold. He was like, hey man, I had to buy it. Well, the thing is, because makes I, me happy. Well, the thing is, I will think about, I'll overthink about it. Like, do you really need it? So, just like texting Dana, I just gotta do it. You know, or like you need to push you, a little bit. When, no, when you talk about something, the more you talk about it, and 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 the more you talk it and not act, like kind of you, you back off a little bit. You know, versus like I want to do this, do it and fucking do it. You know. Yeah. So know. the guy was like, "Do you want to leave a deposit?" I'm like. No, I'm just going to pay it for it full because if I leave a deposit, that will give me time to think about it and maybe reverse my decision, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I called my dad. I'm like, Dad, I need you to tell me this is okay. He's like, it's okay. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even tell you what, I, what, what it is yet, Dad, you know? He's like, all right. So I told him, you know, and I told him, like, how much I made and, like, with sponsorships and my T-shirts and stuff like that. And, you know, kind of what I paid out for the fight and what I bought and what it was out the door. He's like, yeah, you're good. Good, like, good for you. I'm like, all right. <sighs> I can breathe. You know, because my dad's one of those guys that he'll, he's going to tell you the bad before the good. Like, you yeah. idiot. Why'd you get that? Like, you, what are you, stupid? Like, you don't need that thing. Shoot, you know? sh- shoot you straight. Yeah. yeah. You need people like that. And the thing is, my older brother has two mo- two scooters at home. They're 150s. And my dad has, like, a little motorcycle that's a 150. So now I can enjoy I can I can ride with the gang, dude. I'm definitely getting a jean jacket, cut-off sleeve, vest. And I'm going to get the, the Menace logo, like, embroidered on the back. There you go. And I'm going to get, like, an obnoxious helmet with, like, a mohawk or something like that. Where people are like, look at this fucking guy. Look at this guy on his scooter. But that bike is cool. It is pretty dope. Yeah. It's tiny. So, yeah. 
I I, I want to ride people around on it. It's got like it's got a passenger seat. Yeah, well, everyone keep a lookout. Dennis will be the only person in the winter riding. No, his hang on, hang on. I showed pictures of it to Ryan the Flair today. He's like, yeah, I'll buy one. I'm like, yeah, now we're gonna get to gang, 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 gang. <laughs> I don't know. I want a little squad, dude. And you know the flat. The flat God forbid, but he might go down on that bike. He's one of those. I'll laugh. I remember as, like, long, as, as long as he's okay. Remember he broke. He he couldn't stop. He had the one, the one wheeler, mm-hmm. and he had to pull out of a UFC fight because he fell on the one wheeler. Yeah. Well, how, how's he supposed to learn, Stan? Yeah. <laughs> but you know the you know the one wheelers. He was riding a one wheel and he fell. He broke his wrist uh, and his elbow. Uh, you know what's funny is is. Uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, Greg Squaw, is watching Ryan on this thing, like, whipping around the gym. And then, like, you know, Greg's teaching class. So he's like, you know, I hope he falls. Yeah. Fifteen minutes later, Ryan's out in the parking lot and, like, by himself. It's not like he's, like, trying to show off for people. So where he's, like, pushing to the next level. He's just by himself and, like, pushed the limit too far, hit a little curb, fell off, doing, like, the thing goes, like, 19 miles per hour. Yeah, it's fast. You know? And he fell and landed wrong and he goes back in and he's like, Greg, I think I broke my arm. And he's like, ah, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, well, dude, what are you doing? No helmet on. <laughs> yeah, many times. I remember yeah. one time he had knee surgery and he was like, remember big, the old gym, Big Pete made that little lip by the door so the rain didn't come in? Right. So he like just had knee surgery, was eating a slice of pizza on the phone, and Depot said some shit like that. Like, I hope this guy falls. And he was like kicking what Big Pete did, like seeing how good the ledge was. And he went to like kick it with his bad leg, and he missed and fucking <laughs> fell. Uh, <laughs> Hit the ground, dropped his pizza, and was just laying there. Like, yeah, <laughs> we, I can't wait to have Greg on because the thing is, is like he has this like like this power kind of to like say something like man I hope this happens and like sure enough it does yeah. and then I'm like I look at Greg like do you feel bad about that oh. <laughs> and I was like wow yeah. <laughs> oh yeah even at the fights we'll close on this even at the fights a bunch of people were like you're staying the man I was like yeah and they were like oh my god I love the fucking show nice yeah a bunch of people nice especially like uh, a lot of the Lima crowd that I didn't train with you know that yeah. I just joined over yeah. the last two years that I yeah. haven't been there so yeah, people are fans. Yeah, so uh, one of the guys that trains at the gym tagged me in his story, and it's a segment of me talking with TJ Dillashaw about how three-year-olds are little assholes. Yeah. And then he and then he commented, like, man, that had me dying about, you know, how it is to be a dad. He's like, another thing that has me dying is how you, like, just make fun of Stan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, someone's got to keep him in check, you know? Who, who said this? Uh, I think his name's Andrew. St- no, I, not I think Andrew Stock. Coming for you, Andrew Stock. I'll oh, see you damn. on fucking Tuesday. Ooh. What's today, Tuesday? I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> damn. No, nah, I'm joking. I like Andrew Stock. He's a good kid. So yeah. But anyway, on that note, we'll close it. What was this? Menace in the Man, episode thirteen. Yep. Well, see you later. <laughs>